Hi guys, Andy here and welcome to the video. And today I want to, we want to talk about relaxation, which is so important for sports performance. And it's not prioritizing sports performance for many different reasons. Maybe bad education, maybe myths that we still train under, but the fact we're not prioritizing relaxation is a big, big mistake and it's compromising sports performance and making us more injured. So let's talk about the different ways actually relaxation helps you. Uh, relaxation helps you inside your performance, actually to perform better as you do your sport, but also in between your performances in recovery periods. And if it, if it helps you recover, then it's gonna prevent injury. So relaxation, when you're in a rest and repair state, you're going to recover at your best. Okay, all the, all the muscles are gonna recover and you're gonna be stronger for your next uh, training session. But when this doesn't happen, which is nearly always now, because we have got all the different pressures coming in from all parts of our life, family pressure, exam pressure, um, the pressure the athlete puts on themselves, there's pressure from modern technology, maybe in social media, what other think people think, and what all this pressure turns into stress on the body. And when this happens, this is, it, it happens at a chronic state nowadays that everybody gets, gets consumed by. Chronic stress will hinder, obviously, recovery. It's not in a relaxed state. It's con the body is in a constantly fight or flight state. So that is where it compromises recovery, but it also, the body shuts down when it's in a stress state. And I talk about the influence of positive and negative thought in a video on my homepage. So go back and watch that video and you can see, I give you a demonstration of how the body, the mind, positive and negative thought changes the body for better or for worse. So go back and watch that video. But what happens when stress hits the body, the body shuts down, actual, the, the, the limbs start to tighten, your flexibility goes. And basically when we, we do it, we go into a protective state, which is basically with the body just comp compressing, imploding on itself to protect the weak points where the muscles have switched off. And you get all sorts of compensation patterns happening there. And once you train on those compensation patterns, that enhances the compensation patterns, makes them worse, more muscle overuse and more muscle underuse and injury starts to occur. Now, there's research out there that shows psychological stress and the link to injury. You can go to Nippert, 2008, uh, Williams and Anderson, uh, 1988. That's quite an old paper. I believe there's one Labali and Flint, 1996. There's different papers out there. There's many more t giving the evidence, showing the evidence of how stress impacts injury rate. And it's noticeable and it's it's pertinent so we cannot we've got to stop ignoring that we just have to look at these things and pass it on to our athletes this information onto athletes so they prioritize relaxation stress management and so they can actually prevent injury but relaxation helps with performance because if we think about it when we're constantly the the, the the habit we're trying to train our athletes is to train hard. We have to get fitter. We have to train our body to get fitter. We have to push ourselves in training. And the idea is basically to, you've got to train hard. And we keep pushing our athletes to get fitter consistently. But when we train hard, train hard makes us, makes us uncomfortable. And when we're uncomfortable, we tighten up. So when we're training hard consistently, we're actually teaching our athletes to tighten up. Because of the bad education, we cannot handle the, the hard training. We think that if we're trying hard as possible, we're, we're in every rep. If we're tiring out, we're fighting, we're fighting towards the end, we're tensing up, we're fighting hard. It's that we're, we're making ourselves fitter, but we're actually causing ourselves to get tighter. We're creating the habit of getting tighter, which now tightness is the enemy for any performance on sport. Tightness compromises everything. It compromises your strength. It compromises your flexibility and it, co it compromises. For, if you're a sprinter, it's tightness compromises your stride length and your power that you convert it, power that when you hit the ground as well. So in so many ways, tightness is a no-no. And yet the way we are training our athletes at the moment is, is, solidifying this tightness that we get to because the, the thing is when we get to a point when the, the the athletes are competing when the pressure starts to hit because they want to compete and perform well that's what they're training for when they at that time when they're actually they're just meant to perform well they're actually tightening up they've got the habit of tightening up in hard training so it's a habit that they built up over training times now like tightening up relaxation is a habit as well is we must practice the art of relaxation Relaxation is a habit, not a byproduct of hard work. So you don't go and train hard to get relaxation in a race. That doesn't work like that. And yet 
That's what we're teaching our athletes to do. And that doesn't make sense. So if we want our athletes to run relaxed, which is what we, we must do, deep down we all know that relaxation is important to performance of specifically sprinting. But if we want our athletes to run relaxed, we have to train them to be relaxed and run relaxed. We must set the foundation of relaxation in our training sessions. So when they get that point where it's getting really tough, the race, when lactic might be hitting in the 400, when it, they start to slow down in the 200, that they, they don't fight the, the, the tiredness. They actually run with it and keep relaxed because it's all about, in a lot of the, even the 100 meters, the 200 meters, the 400 meters, at the end of a race, it's all about the athlete that slows down the slowest that's going to win. They don't kick, they don't get quicker. It's the athlete that slows down the slowest. Relaxation is a habit, not a byproduct of hard work. Now you can see the good and bad of, of relaxation and tension in today's athletes and even at high level um, competitions. Now I'm a 400 meter runner, 400, for the 400, 400 meter runner and a 400 meter hurdler. So I see performance through athletics, which is my favorite sport. And when I watch the 800 meters, I watch the 400 meters, I see athletes, well-trained athletes, great athletes, tighten up so much towards the end of the race. Some of them don't, they keep their composure, but a lot of them tighten up. You see them, the arms swinging everywhere, the tension in their neck. That's just basically an athlete that's just gained the habit of training hard and tightening up. That's not gonna help. You're gonna slow down faster, which is not the point in athletics. Now, one of the greatest examples of relaxation I've seen is uh, Christine Hurugu in 2008 Beijing when she came into the, what, the last 100 of the 400 meters in the Olympic final and she was in fifth place and she just moved through the, 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 the field. Not because she was working harder, she was working less hard. You can see a headshot of her, she moved through. She was, there's relaxation, there's almost a serenity about her. But when you see her competitors either side, they're, they're tightening up they're all over the place. And they, the stride length is getting shorter and they've slowed down faster and faster and faster. Christina Urugu is slowing down slower and slower and that's why she moved so serenely through the field. She perfected relaxation and she did it again, again, exactly when competition was at its most important. Another most recent example is Beth Dobbin in the 200. She won the UK championships in the 200. And she moved through the field from fifth place, I think it was, coming into the last hundred, coming around the bed and she was in fifth place, but she kept her composure, kept relaxed as she moved through the field. And all the competitors either side were tightening up, tightening up completely, and they, would, they just lost it, they lost it. And she moved through the field so quickly and, so quickly and easily. It, it, and this is, these are events that, I, 200 meters, 400 meters, they take endurance. And you could say that, yes, they, they ran, she ran slower down the, the, the previous 300 or 100 and she, was, had more, she had more kind of energy for the rest. But you see it in the 100 meters as well. You see athletes tighten up completely in the 100. And that's even an endurance event. But it happens in all events. When pressure hits, the athletes have trained hard and trained themselves hard and put them, it put, it left themselves on the floor in the training sessions are more inclined to tighten up. And they're more inclined to tighten up when the pressure is highest during competition as well. Now, in my own experience, I like to blend watching other people with what I learned throughout the health and fitness industry and my personal training and also my own experience as an athlete. And as I said, I was a 400 meter athlete, 400 meter hurdler. And I, my fastest races were always the easiest races of my life. Even in the 400 meter hurdles, and we can all agree that 400 meter hurdles is the most lactic ridden, riddled sport it's event. It's, it's a tough event, but at the end of that race, I felt like I could good round again. I found it so easy. And it happened in the 400 meters as well. And it happened when I ran my 200 meter PB. And the fastest races were the easiest races of my life. And the hardest races were often the slowest. Now that should, that should tell you something. It certainly told me something. That relaxation, how we feel, is so important to how we perform. And yet we do not prioritize this. We do not train this in the training. 
Training and relaxation should be the highest priority in training. Push yourself, do whatever training session you like, but make it as tough as you like, but make sure relaxation is laying the foundation when you're actually hitting the point of being very tired that you stay relaxed. Keep swinging the arms, but stay relaxed. Now, my be activated treatment that I do is basically does that to the body. It relaxes the body and it just makes you feel good. And what I do, if you put the actual, the philosophy is you put the body into a natural, relaxed, parasympathetic sympathetic state, then it's at its most powerful. Muscles actually switch on. And I demonstrate that in the be activated treatment. I demonstrate how when you concentrate on breathing and relaxing, muscles start to switch on. Important muscles like the psoas, which is hugely important. Athletes really should know about the psoas. I talk about it in my blog, so go and watch the uh, go and read the blog on the psoas on my on my website. But the psoas is so important. But if, you, if what happens if I you work on actually your breathing, you activate the psoas, and then you activate the glutes. And what I do is I work through the the, the body up and down, starting at the hips and just realign the body into its natural state. And when you're in that natural state, performing is easy. You've got relaxation. And it sets the foundation for you to do the best training and compete and perform at the, on the best stage. Now, I hope you, that video has given you something to think about. Uh, of course, I'd love, you to, love to hear from you if you get on my website and email me with what you think. Um, I'd love to hear comments, anything about on your own experiences about being an athlete and what relaxation has done for you. If you disagree with me, that'd be great to hear from you about that. And thanks for watching.